morning, Gail. How are you? I'm fine, Dorothea. How are you? I'm well, thank you. So for our audience who doesn't see us, we had a little, uh, in quotes, glitch with our tech uh, connection here. So we're not seeing each other today. We're just hearing each other. And I was just pointing out to Gail, maybe that's a great platform to start our conversation today because uh, Gail had mentioned that she works with uh, massage clients often having her eyes closed so I'll I'll give the floor to you Gail to maybe explore that a little more it seems to be a hint that um, it's a timely topic to talk about how can we yes. see with our eyes closed right right thank you um, the first thing that comes to my mind doesn't even involve massage, but what it involves is a deeper connection with you, whom you are communicating with. Mm. Oftentimes we rely on facial expressions and body language, but here I will need to pay closer attention to your breathing, mm. to your size, you know, like a sigh, not a size. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> so we'll need to go um, deeper into our senses that are not sight yes. and feel. Yeah. So bringing back to massage with my eyes closed, I feel for temperature. I feel for tension in the tissue. I feel for movements of the client. Mm. I'm ever vigilant of being sure that they're comfortable, that there's not in pain or any more pain being caused. So the the slightest movement of the client will alert me, mm -hmm. okay, is it something that I need to do or is it something that has to be done? Yeah. So with our eyes not available today, um, there's, there's a, a deeper sense of connection with us. Mm. I was just contemplating whether I wanted to share this or not, but I will share this. Mm -hmm. When I was a young girl, um, very young, I think I was four mm -hmm. or five, my brother, my parents were sleeping and my brother and I thought we would make breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all I knew about breakfast was that I eat it. Yeah. And <laughs> we, we put butter in a frying pan, and oh. I was eye level to the stove. Yeah. And my, my brother had a potato on a fork above the fat, you yeah. know, the, the hot butter. Mm -hmm. And I pushed the potato, and it flopped into the, the oil, oh. and it f burned my eyes. Oh, I'm so sorry. And it was just frightening for yeah. my brother and for myself, but we thought, okay, now we have to take care of this before my parents get up so mm. we don't get in trouble. Mm. Well, it turned out that I was really in trouble. It yeah. burned my eyes and my parents took me to the hospital and I can remember sitting in the wheelchair and my mother crying mm. and the doctor saying she'll never see again. Oh, wow. And my mom, really lost it at that point wow. and they were they immediately took me in and did things to my eyes and i was patched for i don't know two or three months i had patches on my eyes and mm. there, they thought really there wasn't any hope for this kid and oh, wow. we just really took care of my eyes and so i understand not having the vision of um the gift of vision mm. and I take that very seriously through my life yeah. grateful the things that they've done to my eyes healed mm -hmm. and I certainly have amazing eyesight right now and I'm grateful for that every day so yeah. being in in a uh, environment that you're not used to yeah it, it makes you feel a literal vulnerable, mm -hmm. but what right here now is what I am thinking that we are our own judge. We, the judgment comes up of, can you hear me? Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you understand 
my meaning and my intent of my words to you. Mm. So I think being patient and being understanding with yourself in a time that is unusual, mm -hmm. I think will serve us well. Yeah. Wow, Gail, first of all, thank you for sharing this. I mean, mm -hmm. stories like that, they touch us on such a deep level, even if we have not experienced the same thing ourselves. But mm -hmm. it's this bringing us back to so many memories of our own journey of of fear and uncertainty. And uh, I couldn't help thinking about how your brother must have felt. Oh, my goodness, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's our own wrestling with what happens in you know when in a split second everything in life changes and oh, how boy, timely yeah how timely of a topic isn't it and mm. and the the worst case prognosis to face that and still not give up and to uh -huh shift our perception to another channel mm -hmm. instead of all focusing on what's not possible at that moment or doesn't seem possible at that moment and and just the the fantastic power within us to overcome uh incredible struggles by by um not giving up hope absolutely yeah and by taking and care you said they took good care of your eyes but by taking good care yeah so essential right. isn't right. it through the years i've worked um I work construction. I've worked a, a couple of jobs, but mm -hmm. I've gotten things in my eyes. I've I've gotten uh, metal in my eye, oh, wow. and my eye has been scratched by branches walking through the woods. Mm -hmm. And I immediately, without hesitation, will take care of that. Yeah, the pain is pretty intense when you when you scratch your eye, yeah. and um, it takes a long time to heal. But if you're vigilant, if you're paying close attention and really understanding what the body is doing, yeah. the body is amazing in healing. Mm. And it takes a lot of focus mm -hmm. and intention to change what is happening. So in my understanding of pain, I will always say change your view change how you see it yes will, what will change how you feel about it yes and take the fear and help you move forward mm. and help your body move forward in healing yeah i mean haven't the last two years been such a lesson in that and the recent events in our worlds amplify that even more this when we're faced with the unthinkable the unspeakable uh, when we're lost yes. for words and as we started the video and the the visuals didn't come up we said Dorothea you're in the dark and yeah. it so opened my eyes pun intended I guess to <laughs> how we often feel in the dark when we're faced with the unprecedented mm. and what resources we have within ourselves to tap into that are mobile, that are always with us and are all always attainable, but it does take a shift of focus, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. It t a shift. And, and also, yeah, go ahead. You also, I, th I think for um, a shift of focus, but forgiveness yes. and openness yes. to what is something that you can't imagine yet yeah i mean this example with your brother is so you know how many 
siblings, you know, kids playing together, got themselves into trouble, not anticipating any, you know, not having any ill intent, not anticipating any trouble, just doing what made sense. Yeah. You know, when you want breakfast, if you're hungry, you, you want to make breakfast and eat. Uh, so innocent of, um, of an intention. And when that, um, you know, avalanche is out of control, how um, we carry often a um, a sense of guilt with us of, I should have known this, or I should have done this differently, or mm. we should have prevented this. And the shoulds can take over quite heavily in the world. And again, what you pointed out, this... It, you know, if you apply it to the, the body on the massage table, the shoulds just make the, the muscles even tighter uh, when they're already cranky. Right. And yeah. they're not the way to relieve the pain. They're not the way to um, step back into living. They, they amplify what's not working. Mm. And then how how... Do children come to a point where they can say, okay, learn quite a lesson, uh, not going to do that again, and how can we celebrate the, the lesson learned and the progress made and the healing that comes out of that? Right, the healing. One of the things that are that's really strong for me in my life right now is that I'm learning that there are two ways to do things. Mm. And had I known that at that moment of the potato on the fork or potato in the pan, yeah. had I known my brother had a plan and I take really, this is my entire efforts on the, the incident. I, I, I pushed the potato down to mm. make it happen. Mm -hmm. And he had a plan to put it in gently yeah. with a fork. Mm -hmm. So I, um, as I grow and as I learn and I, as I know more, mm -hmm. accept that there are more than one way yeah. to do things and that there's a, a different approach than my approach. Yeah. And those are, that's a hard lesson to, be, to, to take in and forgiving yourself is, is also a, a lesson that I believe would serve us all. Mm. You reminded me of the image of you know compacting sand and the potato mm. being forced into the the fat instead of gently you know emerged in it. It really brings back this message of the gentle approach might take longer, but it generally has a power within that allows to adjust to the situation step by step rather than rushing. Right. And when Taking you work, time. yeah, when you work with a tight muscle that, that applying force to it again, amplifies the problem rather than resolving it. And if we yes. can, yeah, if we can take that lesson into our, our larger living of, okay, as you said, we have two choices. You know, do I force things to happen or do I take stock of where I am currently and then to gently make the next step forward in the direction I want to go? And I'm sure it, it was your eyes, you know, healing the gentle approach was the trick, wasn't it? Yes, mm. definitely. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the, the, you couldn't go aggressively. You had to let the body heal. You yes. had to let, do things gently to move forward mm. yeah so yeah. how about we close this recording at this moment because it's such a beautiful lingering thought the gentle mm. approach to living and um what i would suggest is maybe start a second recording um so we have two shorter segments rather than one long one would that sound okay to you that's Perfect, yes, indeed. Super. Thank you for letting me share my story, Dorothy. Oh, thank you for sharing it. It's uh, so profound. You know, when we speak of our own experiences, it, it 
evokes something deeper within all of us and uh, so mm. thank you for being willing to share the story so i'm closing this recording right now thank you thank you